In this video, I'd like to talk about scope, the scope of variables. And in order to see what that means, let's look at a couple of classes. I have scope 101 and scope 101 runner. And inside of the scope 101 class, I have a method called scope method one, and it's going to do some simple arithmetic. So I create two variables, num1 and num2, and they're assigned to 30 and 10. I'm going to add those two numbers together, and then I'm going to print out the results. So the result would look something like 30 plus 10 equals 40. Now that we have the method written, let's go ahead and test it over in scope 101 runner. In order for scope 101 runner to use methods of the scope 101 class, we have to create an object. So I do that, and I call my object scope. We have called the method scope method 1, and so let's see what it would output. And it outputs exactly what we would expect. 30 plus 10 equals 40. Now in order to demonstrate scope, what I've done is I've created a second method called scope method 2. And instead of adding the two numbers together, it's going to try to subtract the two numbers and find the difference. So I say int difference equals num1 minus num2. And I use a system out print line statement just like I did in the first method. And it would say something like 30 minus 10 equals 20. Now let's go ahead and use this method, scope method 2, and see what happens when we try to run it. Unfortunately, we would get an error. And the error that we would get is a problem with scope. Because the two variables needed in scope method 2 are declared in scope method 1. And they are what we call local variables. And they have local scope. And what scope means is the section of code where a variable can be accessed. So these two variables can only be accessed inside of the scope1 method because scope is determined by the braces around it. So once a variable is created, all you have to do is look to the braces around it to determine where it will be viable. So if we were to do that, we would see that these two local variables, num1 and num2, only have scope within scope method 1, and they do not exist down in scope method 2. And therefore, that's why we would get the error when we tried to run the code. Now, is there a way to fix this? Is there a way to make a variable available to any method inside of a class? Well, yes, yes, there is. What we're going to do is we're going to move num1 and num2 out of scope method 1. And by moving them outside of scope method 1, we're actually changing their scope. The scope of num1 and num2 is now dictated by the braces of the class, and the scope is considered global because the entire class can now access num1 and num2. And instead of calling them local variables, Java calls them instance variables if they're located not inside of a method, but rather just inside of the class. So if we were to ask, where is the scope of num1 and num2, it would include everything inside of the scope 101 class. They would be class level variables. If we were to run the program again, we wouldn't get an error. We would get 30 plus 10 equals 40 from scope method 1. And from scope method 2, we would get 30 minus 10 is 20. So let's put this all together. What is scope? It's the section of code where a variable can be accessed. So as we saw, the two local variables, num1 and num2, could only be accessed inside of the scope1 method. But when we moved them out and made them instance variables, the scope was the entire class. And if you ever have a question of where a certain variable has scope, just look at the braces that are surrounding it. Variables inside a method are called local variables, and variables inside a class but outside methods are called instance variables. Understanding the scope of variables is important in where a variable should be placed within a class. If you want everyone to be able to access it in that class and make it an instance variable, it has to be outside of the methods. If only a certain method needs a variable, then those variables need to be placed inside the method and made as local variables. Understanding this concept will save you from many errors. Thanks so much for watching the video. If you liked the video, please do click like below. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, please do subscribe to the channel. Truly, thanks again for watching.